I would like to uh, also thank uh, Professor Vincent and also McDonald Institute for inviting me uh, to have a chance to give a talk about uh, microwave kinetic inductance detectors called MKIDs. Uh, they are very popular, uh, recently getting popular, uh, and uh, variety of in variety of applications in astronomy, in uh, particle physics, and also sometimes you find some companies are working on uh, industry about MKIS, for example, mostly about uh, national security or uh, developing some uh, equipment for security in general in airports. Uh, M kits are popular because uh, you can uh, find them uh, useful from millimeter range to the ultraviolet. However, indirectly also you can use, as uh, Ryan mentioned, uh, on uh, dark matter detection and also neutrino double beta decay. As you have heard, probably the M kits are superconducting micro resonators. So the, we can model one pixel of M kits like one uh, RC circuits here. Uh, if you excite uh, these RC circuits from outside with the frequency uh, which is equal to the or related to the, the one over uh, root of LC, uh, what will happen here? Uh, we will have a drop down on voltage and power. It seems that it's uh, getting short circuits. And if you calculate both diagram for power, you will see uh, you will see that the power here in uh, resonance frequency is dropping up, you know, through dropping down. And this is what also we see when we are measuring in practice with the network analyzer or uh, the other electronic setup system. So the uh, M case looks like this, uh, just one pixel. You put uh, different pixels that you design for different uh, resonance frequencies. The sensitive part is the inductive part here that you see here. And also the capacitance part uh, is just uh, for uh, tuning the frequency, resonance frequency. And uh, you, you will uh, couple this uh, uh, resonator with uh, some transmission line here that it can be uh, uh, capacitive coupling or inductive coupling here for uh, optical range of M keys. We usually use uh, ca capacitive coupling that you see that uh, the equivalent uh, components are here. So the, this is uh, what we have as a M kit uh, pixel. Uh, when a uh, photon hits, what will happen because they are superconductors, so in superconductors lower than uh, critical temperature, uh, the electrons bind together as a copper pairs. So the photon hits, uh, they will be broken to quasi particles. The energy gap uh, is different from Fermi the level uh, because of superconductivities uh, uh, properties. It's almost 10,000 times lower than uh, semiconductors type. That's why uh, superconducting uh, uh, detectors or bolometers are much more uh, precise than uh, what we get or measure from uh, semiconductors. So photon hits and breaks uh, copper pairs, but this is a microscopic. What will happen and what we measure in a microscopic scale uh, with our electronic out system is like that. So without any load, we have this black one. This is just uh, resonators in IQ plane and also in uh, S parameter. Uh, when photon hits, the kinetic inductance, this is what, uh, what is the properties of the uh, superconductors, will be changed. And then we will have a shift in uh, frequency, resonance frequency, amplitude, and phase. But usually we measure phase uh, because uh, it, uh, the difference in phase is much higher than what we measure from frequency or amplitude. And it increases our sensitivity in terms of measurement. Just to give uh, a little bit idea that how uh, MKs look like, uh, this is uh, one of uh, uh, my recent design about uh, optical MKs, uh, which I used several layer of uh, superconductivity. Uh, you see that we put uh, these uh, pixels uh, next to each other. For example, consider that this one is designed to, uh, to be excited at the four gigahertz. So this one will be four plus uh, two megahertz. So gap frequency between uh, these uh, pixels will be in order of uh, two megahertz. And then they will be excited. Uh, they will be excited or read out from one single uh, transmission line that usually we use niobium uh, because niobium critical temperature is uh, in order of 9.2 Kelvin. But uh, the pixel itself is usually uh, aiming to uh, have a critical temperature lower than one Kelvin because we want to increase the, the uh, kinetic inductance that later in the uh, next slides I will show you. Uh, so we, we, we use uh, niobium uh, transmission line and uh, because it's get 
sooner and earlier than pixels itself uh, superconductor and we will uh, uh, make us ensure that we have at least uh, our uh, transmission line is working and then uh, it, the terms comes to the uh, to the pixel itself so the, this is how the in uh, two dimensional it looks like in three dimensional uh, this is what you see so we uh, deposit uh, metal like aluminum or titanium nitride uh, as a superconductor thin film uh, over one um, substrate can be silicon germanium sapphire and uh, the uh, parameters here the thickness of the thin film is very important to be uniform uh, because if it is not uniform, so definitely the, we will have a problem in quality factor of the measurement, or sometimes uh, it happens that uh, maybe the, the frequencies overlap each other. So that's why uh, it's better uh, we use uh, ALD, that's uh, in, uh, the, pos the position is uh, with the precision of the Angstrom. Uh, and also for optical range, MK is better using electron lithography because sometimes the gap of these lines are in order of 200 nanometer or 100 nanometer, which is not uh, uh, which is not possible with the uh, optical lithography. But for millimeter range, because the range of uh, pixels are big enough uh, in in order of millimeter, uh, that's why it should be fine um, uh, to use also optical uh, lithography system. So because the, the result of one M keys looks like this, uh, if we wanna see that if really it's working well or not, uh, the parameters we should define is quality factor here. The quality factor of one resonances can be defined by these parameters here. Intrinsic uh, quality factor is uh, something comes from the fabrication and design of M kits itself. And the coupling quality factor, this term here, is related to the coupling of the pixel to the transmission line. So total uh, quality factor can be calculated by intrinsic uh, quality factor and uh, coupling quality uh, factor. As I mentioned, uh, the parameters that we uh, we uh, like would like to measure uh, about uh, changing of the properties of the, the reson uh, resonances are changing of the phase uh, compared to the uh, density of the quasi particles that produced by the incident photon. It has uh, two parts in equation. Uh, this part is uh, related to the uh, material that you are using as a superconductor. As you see here, the terms is about imaginary uh, conductivity of uh, conductance of the uh, film that you are using. And here it shows the, the temperature. Uh, and also the density of the quasi particle. These are parameters that uh, you should take care. If you want to increase the sensitivity of your M keys, uh, take care that which material you are using or how you are fabricating uh, or combining these materials to each other. The first part uh, goes back to the geometry. So we should take care of also geometry that uh, in next slides I will explain. The V is here is about the volume of the uh, inductor that is a sensitive part of our M keys. Before going ahead uh, about uh, in details of uh, uh, M keys, uh, M keys are superconductors. So superconductivity has uh, some features uh, that uh, lower than some uh, temperature, we call it uh, critical temperature, resistivity will be zero. Definitely not all metals are superconductor. So we have a uh, different type of metals that you can categorize it in a superconductivity of type one, type two, and also PEC that is a normal metal like, uh, the, like uh, copper that is not a superconductor. But aluminum has this feature. The first time Haik uh, Ons was working on uh, liquid uh, helium, and uh, he have uh, noticed that if he puts uh, uh, some materials inside of that, uh, temperature that the, the properties of that metals are changing and he found that uh, it is uh, the, the, the primary or basic properties of the uh, superconductivities and he got the Nobel Prize for that but later on uh, Bardin uh, uh, Copper uh, Schiffer uh, they explained that what why it happens they found that uh, because of changing in uh, lattice of uh, uh, positive charges uh, it's a uh, uh, it produces a, like a, a phonon as a collective change in this uh, lattice, which interacts with the electrons and bind electrons to each other. Uh, this is how we call these uh, copper pairs. And uh, the energy of binding is different from what we find in uh, Fermi level uh, that for, for normal conductivity, which uh, can be calculated by these uh, equations and is related to the critical uh, temperature. Uh, the uh, other point for superconductivity that is very important in running the MKs is that uh, usually the, we have 
BCS theories uh, when the temperature is uh, almost around 20% uh, of the uh, critical temperature. That's why when, for example, we are using M kits and running uh, that, uh, we know that critical temperature of aluminum is around 1.2, but we prefer to 10 times at least uh, uh, run it at 10 times lower than what, uh, what it has, for example, something like 100 millikelvin. So the thin film has uh, two parameters, as I mentioned. Is it uh, one is the, the geometry magnetic uh, magnetic properties that it has, and the second is because it's a superconductor, so it has also kinetic inductance. Kinetic inductance, this is uh, what comes from the thin film superconductivity, can be calculated by this equation, which here you see that T is a thickness of thin film. It means that if you decrease the thin film thickness, so you will have higher kinetic inductance and better uh, response in M kits. And uh, also that the material is important that what type of material you are using. And also the another important point that uh, we are aiming to the change um, the material or combine materials to the bring down critical temperature lower than one Kelvin. This is what uh, in a previous slide we saw that energy gap is related to the critical temperature. So we are aiming to decrease the thickness. However, we are limited. Uh, to decrease that much. For example, for aluminum, we can get the 20 nanometer or for, for titanium nitride, 40 nanometer. Uh, so the only aim is uh, decreasing the critical temperature by some uh, technologies here. You see that the, the thin films uh, were used for or are using uh, uh, for uh, fabrication of M kits uh, or aluminum. Uh, usually for millimeter range, but the aluminum is not good for uh, optical range because, uh, because of the reflection of light. That's why uh, titanium nitride and platinum silicide is one of the candidates for that. However, uh, recently we have also hafnium or uh, tungsten silicide. Uh, I mean that the researchers are just investigating to find out uh, which materials gives better uh, resolution. Uh, for titanium nitride, uh, it's a little bit difficult because uh, it depends that when you are de depositing titanium nitride on your uh, um, on your semiconductor, it depends on the flow of flow rate of uh, nitrogen gas. Platinum silicide is much more better than titanium nitride and aluminum in terms of uh, uniformity of the thin film, but the problem is that it's a little bit expensive. Uh, it's uh, you should uh, consider more than ten thousand dollar, but here you just uh, take care of uh, hundred or fifty bucks. As I mentioned, titanium nitride is uh, a little bit challenging for fabrication, but the advantages is that if you can, if you have good experience, you can uh, bring down uh, temperature, uh, critical temperature lower than one Kelvin. And that's why it's one of the popular material for uh, optical range. Another uh, techniques that people use to decrease uh, critical temperature using proximity effect. We know that in proximity effect, uh, when you put uh, one um, normal conductor over one uh, superconductor, superconductor, it will be superconductor because it seems that, for example, copper pearls are leaking uh, to the conductor. Uh, by using this technique, uh, you see that uh, there are different papers talking about titanium nitride using titanium as a normal conductor and the superconductor and uh, with different uh, thickness. Uh, they get uh, different uh, critical temperature. For example, the latest one that our colleagues in APC7, they were using uh, 30 nanometer of aluminum uh, over uh, 10, 10 nanometer uh, gold over 30 nanometer aluminum uh, on, the, uh, on the substrate that gives them around 0.8 uh, 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 Kelvin as a, the critical temperature. So as earlier I uh, explained, uh, the first parameters that uh, helps us to get better, uh, uh, better uh, sensitivity of our M keys is the geometry. So geometry, uh, the first thing that you should uh, keep in your mind when you are designing, you should have, uh, you should uh, design it for intrinsic quality factor of 30,000 because higher than that, uh, we have a limitation for fabrication. There are a bunch of different variety of uh, geometries you see in different uh, research uh, papers. Uh, the first uh, type of uh, M kits was looks looked like this, like a quarter uh, wavelength. And then uh, we got that uh, if we switch to the Lekit lumped element uh, kinetic inductance, uh, that the, the, the uh, sensitivity and also the, the a response of M kits will be much more better. However, there is also another uh, geometry spiral. We call it a double folded 
it's uh, getting uh, much better. I cannot say much, but in some percentage, uh, better uh, result in terms of uh, crosstalk uh, and also absorption because it can absorb uh, dual polarization also. But here, uh, usually it is uh, for single uh, polarization. Uh, the absorption is a little bit less than uh, design B. Recently in 2019, our colleagues again in APC7, uh, they came up for optical range because you know in millimeter range, uh, the size of capacitive part and inductive part more or less is around millimeter. So you don't care about filling factor that much. Here. But for optical range, the size of sensitive part is in order of micrometer. Is uh, around, for example, consider 30, 20 micrometer total size. But you don't want to have a big size of capacitance because, for example, on one uh, five inch wafer, uh, instead of having, uh, for example, 100 pixels, uh, you prefer to have uh, 2000 pixels. That's why they came uh, with the idea of using MIM. MIM uh, is a metal insulator, metal type of capacitors that uh, just uh, two plates are parallel uh, to each other by insulator. And then by changing the surface area, you can tune your frequency that uh, you are aiming for different fre resonance frequency that you would like. Uh, the other parts, uh, the other type of MKs are um, uh, sensitive for uh, dual polarization of the light. Usually they are, uh, they, they, uh, they, they, they were developed for millimeter range for cosmic micro background projects. Uh, for uh, B-mode uh, detection. You see different geometries also here, for example, the circular, or in um, um, like a uh, butterfly uh, or Hil Hilbert uh, type of geometry that they used for millimeter range of the astronomy uh, in uh, NICA project. So the, this design is what we designed because we were aiming to the design 10,000 pixel M kits uh, for uh, ultra fast uh, astronomy project that we were aiming to uh, detect something, uh, uh, I mean, that uh, for uh, optical uh, counterpart of fast radio bursts. Uh, that's why uh, we came up with design. I brought it here to just say that how we should optimize the design of MKs uh, in order to have better uh, uh, resolution and uh, response and quality factors. So the first uh, thing that we should take care of is that the resistivity, uh, sheet resistivity, and also the uh, gap between uh, these two lines and the width are important because uh, they should be more or less equal to this value that we calculated from substrate. And this is also the, the impedance of the open air, uh, 377 ohm. So after calculating and optimizing uh, these parameters, we found that uh, increasing the size of width of these lines would uh, help us uh, in terms of uh, absor absorption, light absorption. So uh, you see, I, I brought it here to the adjacent uh, uh, resonators, uh, and uh, I, I will try to analyze to see that uh, how we should uh, select these uh, values in order to have a lower crosstalk and higher uh, uh, coupling quality factor. Here you see that the gap between this resonator and the ground ground plate, uh, it's uh, if you are uh, decreasing, so the quality uh, coupling quality factor will be higher. So that's why we came up with four. However, the amplitude difference is, uh, is about the crosstalk, but with other techniques, we try to get rid of the crosstalk. So that's why we uh, chose uh, for a uh, micrometer here as a gap. For example, the coupling width, we they came up again with two because the sensitivity didn't uh, change that much, but the, since quality, uh, coupling quality factor was more important for us. So the, we saw that uh, it, it, it helps us uh, to, the, uh, to the design uh, to, to design and increase the coupling quality factor. Sorry, I, I said two, but uh, then uh, we, we came up with the four or five, I think that we changed it. Uh, and also that the width between these two pixels also if it's increasing, so definitely crosstalk will be, uh, uh, the crosstalk will be the definitely less. These are these the, these were uh, something that we came up in geometry, and the other problem in a large array M case we should take care of is that uh, is the, the geometry total size of geometry that you are using, because with one pixel you want to make two thousand pixels by just uh, changing the size of these uh, fingers. Uh, we have noticed that if you change the size of fingers, uh, when you are coming to downside the gap between frequencies instead of two megahertz, that was uh, our purpose, uh, but uh, we are in, uh, it increases to the three, the three megahertz. Or when the, the fringe is coming down, 
uh, you see that the, the gap between frequencies instead of two megahertz is going up to the 60 megahertz. So that's why you should a little bit uh, try to the challenge uh, yourself with uh, this type of uh, geometry the optimization. And at the end also we use another uh, technique like trimming, we call it, uh, that uh, we bring this, uh, for example, uh, 10,000 pixel M kits. Uh, we, uh, we, uh, we do measurement and we see that some, uh, for example, frequencies are overlapping. And then again, we send it to fabrication and trim some of these uh, finger lines uh, gap. This is one of the, the optimization between, this, uh, between the, the fabrication and also design. For increasing the, the absorption and uh, coupling, uh, optical coupling, uh, this is very important. We use uh, some uh, uh, guidelines for our lights just to hit to the sensitive part, the inductive part, not the interdigitated capacitance part. So the, for millimeter range, usually, usually we use silicone, aluminum, or copper uh, conical horn. Uh, there are different available uh, um, technologies there. But for optical range, we usually use uh, micro lenses that uh, the material is from uh, pro uh, uh, like a plastic. And uh, this, this helps us uh, if the light comes from different angle, it's just focused that, uh, on the, the sensitive part that is the inductive part. And other techniques that in 2020, ben Ma in Ben Mazin lab they applied was uh, coating uh, whole uh, chip with uh, dioxide silicone uh, or uh, thallium oxide, uh, which gave them around 30% increase in absorption and almost around 50% increase in uh, quality the, uh, in a quantum efficiency. So, we designed our M kit. Uh, we should put it in a box and put it inside of refrigerator. For designing of box, also there are some uh, uh, there are some uh, consideration that you should take care of them, uh, especially for millimeter range. For optical range, just uh, you keep it open here and uh, shine it your M kits from top. But for millimeter range, usually we shine it from substrate. That's why uh, when you take a look to the circuit here. This equivalent circuit is for substrate and then your kit, liquid, and also back short. You prefer most of the power comes and just goes to the liquid and you have open circuits here. That's why if you wanted to have that, the gap between uh, the distance between your keys back shorts matters here. The back shorts is, uh, is you consider that this is aluminum box, this this uh, the lead for this aluminum box. So the distance between this and that should be in order of a quarter of a quarter wavelength of uh, wavelength of the, the lights that you are going to uh, absorb and measure. So this is uh, one of the, the one of the techniques that you should also take care in uh, mounting your M keys inside of your aluminum box. At the end, when you mount it inside of box, you need uh, some facilities uh, to cool, uh, like a refrigerators uh, to the, keep it uh, cooled down around 100 millik or 30 millik. This is what we had. Uh, there are usually the adiabatic demagnetization refrigerator types and also dilution refrigerator. We had the magnetization refrigerator and a little bit it was suffering, we were suffering from magnetic uh, field that later on we, I will show you that we put uh, some, uh, uh, some uh, shield here. But anyway, uh, the techniques is uh, easy. The, I mean, that the technology that uh, you do, can cool down is based on uh, par paramagnetic uh, salt pills like a ferric aluminum alum or gadolinium gallium garnet and using very strong magnetic field around eight Tesla. But after you soak down and uh, you uh, cool down the temperature, uh, you will not feel that much uh, the, the filter around, maybe it's around, uh, uh, around four Gauss, something like that. But uh, you can also get rid of that uh, with uh, the good shielding. Uh, the capability of uh, what we had for, for example, a small type of pixel uh, MKs, like uh, let's say 20 pixel MKs, the holding time uh, was around one week. It means that for one week, we could have 30 millikelvin, and then we were recycling for a couple of hours. And then again, for one week, we had the 30 millikelvin. So the efficiency of the refrigerator was really good. But for 10,000 pixel, uh, it decreases to eight hours. So it depends the load of a thermal. You can uh, consider that how the keeping holding time for uh, that part of uh, your experimental area would be. So uh, we could uh, know how the people are investigating about uh, improving the, the M kits, 
But it's also important that how you want to uh, get these signals or excite signals from outside of refrigerator to inside of refrigerator. For having uh, the, the efficient uh, transmission line inside of refrigerator uh, and uh, having a, a good measurement about these parameters, uh, you see that in this equation, you should take it off to the, the two categories. The first is the coupling between your uh, pixel to the transmission line. And second comes from the transmission line inside of refrigerator, which, uh, which usually is about your, uh, the cables that you are using, is, is it the co uh, coaxial cable or uh, which, which type of uh, the coaxial cable you are using or which type of connectors you are using. For example, for optical, uh, MQs is also the, somehow important that you use uh, non-magnetic connectors instead of uh, normal uh, brass nickel uh, type of con uh, connectors. It affects on your uh, resolution. So uh, you, uh, you, you have your MQs here. You, first of all, you should, uh, you should notice that you should shine it with uh, very low uh, power around minus 100 or 70 dBm, because if you shine it with higher uh, power, so definitely copper pairs will be broken and you, uh, your MKIT is not sensitive anymore to your lights. And at the end also, when you wanna read out these MKIT, you should amplify it in order to increase the SNR, uh, which we usually use LNI, LNA, uh, low noise amplifier, hemp uh, amplifier that uh, usually they work at for Kelvin and at the end, we will have uh, a figure readout system. So as I mentioned, coaxial cables uh, matters here uh, because we should have uh, isolation from 30 millik to 3K, 1K or 500 millik because any hits, uh, uh, any, any hits comes uh, to experimental area, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we will lose our MKs and we will not uh, have a sensitive MKs anymore. Uh, that's why uh, we, we usually use uh, superconducting cables. You see that uh, the superconducting cables uh, thermal conductivity is much lower than uh, normal stainless steel, for example, uh, coaxial cables. And also the loss of these uh, superconducting cables is much more lower than what you have in uh, common, uh, I mean, normal type of uh, 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 co coaxial cables. This is one of the, the, uh, the LNA that we are using. As I mentioned, they are hemp-based technologies. Uh, they, the, one of the parameters that is important for us because the noise of electronics is very uh, depends on these, uh, the, the type of the uh, amplifier that you are using. So the amplifier that we, we were using, uh, it was around uh, 5K uh, thermal noise, but uh, you, you can also, if you wanna have a much more precise uh, uh, response, uh, you, you can find also 1K. Many of uh, facilities like JPL, NASA, or uh, Estron, they, uh, they fabricate and design their own uh, uh, noise amplifier, uh, low noise amplifier uh, systems. And at the end, you need the readout system. For readout system, usually people use Roche to board. Since the beginning of the dev MKS development, uh, they also develop uh, such uh, systems. But you consider that it's a little bit expensive if you want to have a large array MKS, because in large array MKS you have uh, 10,000 pixel. Let's say that uh, in my design that I, I designed it between four to eight gigahertz, and each these bands was included around 2,000 pixel. So for 2000 pixel, I need four gigahertz. So I need 10, 10 of these Roche two boards that makes my uh, electronic readout system very expensive in order of $100,000. So that's why one of the other uh, uh, solution is using software defined radios. Uh, there, uh, that software defined radios that we used uh, was from National Instrument. Uh, we just, uh, for prototype, we wanted to see that how it works for a small type of uh, MKs. For example, you see that the bandwidth is 160 megahertz and it was useful for 80 uh, pixels uh, of MKs. You see the, with that uh, SNR, we could, uh, with that uh, SDR, software different radius, we could get really promising results. But the only pro uh, problem that we had is that uh, we couldn't uh, we couldn't use uh, we couldn't run it as a frequency domain multiplexing because one of the advantages of MKs compared to test transition age sensors other bolometers is that uh, they are capable of uh, sending all frequencies together and reading out all frequencies together which we call it frequency domain multiplexing but with this uh, we could we got a lot of noise with the str that we had so it was good when you are sweeping the frequency for each pixel. For example, first you send two gigahertz readout from the one pixel, 
that is uh, the frequency is two gigahertz, and then you send it another frequency by this way that we call it uh, time domain multiplexing. Uh, we could get really good results. This this is uh, it shows that uh, we lighted up our M kids with uh, blue light. Uh, a little bit, you see that this is tilty because of the sampling rate that we had, and also noise equivalent power that we measured was around minus uh, 16. But as I mentioned, it was good for a small type of MKIDs. Uh, for large array MKIDs, we came up with better solution. If you use Supermicro with uh, eight slots, you can find very cheap uh, Supermicros. Even uh, they have 10 slots of uh, PCI Express 16. Uh, and also for digitization, for four gigahertz bandwidth, we came up using 10 giga sample per second ADC. And uh, also the 12.6 uh, kilo sample per, per second DAC. Uh, the technology we wanted to use was uh, uh, the, the uh, instead of down converting by uh, uh, multiplexers, we wanted to use under sampling, uh, which which observe Shannon Nyquist uh, theorem there. Uh, and also you see that we used uh, FMC plus. Uh, which, which is capable of transferring uh, data or rate of for around 500 gigabit per second. Uh, this is very important because many of institutes I've seen that they use just a uh, very normal FMC. They put a lot of ADC there, but they don't uh, consider that the rate of uh, uh, FMC is around 24 gigabit per second, and they cannot really uh, get all data simultaneously to, the, to their FPGA and uh, they lose uh, the money that they spend for um, ADC because like test transitionary sensors, again, they should just multiplex, uh, not only multiplex, I mean that uh, you sh they should use a multiplexer in order to just uh, sequentially read out from their ADC. By this scheme, uh, we found that uh, per pixel, we should spend around uh, $5. Another thing that in MKIS you should uh, know is about noise and try to increase uh, signal to noise ratio. It can be uh, from your electronics, so you should improve your electronics. It can be from transmission line, or it can be from design itself, or something that is an external source and try to disturb your MKIS. So uh, one of the noise that in MKIS uh, we have is generation recombination noise that is goes back to the number of quasi particle you have. Uh, if they are not equ equilibrium and uh, you have external source like magnetic field, uh, they will disturb the number of quasi particles and you will have uh, this noise there. And the another one is readout noise that comes from the readout electronics, uh, the, the transmission line, and also your uh, amplifier. Uh, another noise that is uh, intrinsically comes from the photon noise from the, the related associated to the Bose-Einstein, uh, the, the arrival uh, rate uh, disturb. Uh, 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 the perturbation and uh, the the another noise that comes uh, is uh, called a two level system noise comes from the, uh, the when you have metal and for example it's oxidized so that the uh, uh, interface between them when they are amorphous or several metals you are putting in uh, top of each other so they make uh, a little bit of noise when you are measuring your phase uh, this is uh, that uh, still we don't have very precise model for two level system noise, but uh, still the investigation and researchers are going to make uh, make them uh, and explain them uh, based on physics, and uh, we try to uh, get rid of them by uh, and and at the end we have a higher signal to noise ratio. So as I mentioned, one of the the, the disturbation, uh, the disturbation that we have. Uh, uh, in our uh, M kits, uh, it can be from external source that's uh, like a magnetic field. As you know, we have two type of uh, superconductors, and uh, in, in type of uh, two superconductors, we had uh, we have for vortex state. Uh, this vortex state uh, it applies also for thin film type one, because we know that in type one, just uh, we have Meissner Meissner effect here, and when there is an external magnetic field, it will not uh, penetrate inside of are a metal, uh, but uh, when we have a uh, type two superconductors, uh, that the uh, flux of magnetic quantum penetrates inside of uh, our metal, and uh, based on the, the Lorentz force, we will have circulating currents, and uh, this can be trapped inside of our uh, thin film. So, as I mentioned, thin films uh, behaves like a type two superconductors. This what. Uh, studied uh, in JPL, in Caltech, uh, that uh, they uh, 
uh, they had aluminum uh, M kits and also M kits box. Uh, the thin film, uh, because of the fabrication and also some uh, contamination with oxygen, for example, uh, the critical temperature of aluminum will be the high to 1.4 Kelvin, 1.4 Kelvin, but the, the bulk of aluminum uh, critical temperature is 1.2 Kelvin. So we know that if uh, it is lower than 1.2 Kelvin, so aluminum uh, is a type one superconductor and it will shield uh, wholly uh, these. Uh, M kits, but because uh, M kits is getting superconductor earlier than aluminum box, any ambient magnetic field that you have outside of uh, this box will influence and penetrate to your kit and will stay and trap there. So this is, you see what here, uh, for example, when your uh, external field is around zero uh, Tesla, you have very sharp and nice uh, high quality factor resonator here. But when you have external, uh, uh, external uh, magnetic field in order of micro Tesla, you are losing your resonator and uh, your uh, measurement. That's why, because we were a little bit suffering from the magnetic field of ADR, uh, we came up with the magnetic shield. Uh, we know that for uh, high immune uh, metals uh, or soft magnetic metals, uh, usually they uh, a little bit uh, change the, the magnetic field because they have lower rel magnetic reluctance and that's why the, the magnetic field prefers to uh, a little bit uh, close its, uh, its way uh, around this, uh, this uh, shield, in, in, around this uh, soft magnetic shield. Uh, that's why we use the uh, Amium Metal 4K that's uh, included of 18% uh, of nickel and also iron uh, alloy, which has around 400,000 uh, uh, permeability uh, for for uh, reducing the magnetic field inside of our uh, experimental area. By this, uh, we could reduce 100 times uh, less than Earth, uh, which is 0.3 Gauss, uh, and then ambient uh, magnetic field inside of experimental uh, area was around 3 microtesla. So you see here uh, in our measurement, uh, we see transmission line very nice here at 4K because we use niobium. And then you see that uh, the transmission line is working very well, but how we can really recognize that which one is our resonators or, or comes from our M keys, you see that there are peaks here. So because we designed peaks to be next to each other, so that's why we can uh, understand that these are peaks and they are different from the, the, from the, the uh, other resonators that comes from the specific uh, features of the transmission line. Without magnetic, you see that it's terrible. Uh, I can say terrible because the uh, really quality factor is uh, not good, but uh, with magnetic field, you see that uh, it's much more sharper and uh, also the, the quality factor is much more higher, around 10,000. So a little bit, uh, I will take a look to MKIS also application. Uh, the first uh, application uh, of MKIS was in astronomy, uh, but uh, you know that uh, before that we were using the other type of bolometers or transition age sensors. Uh, almost, I can say that, for example, in uh, SPIX uh, telescope that uh, they are aiming to launch in 2030, I think, uh, around five years ago or 10 years ago, they were uh, analyzing the candidates because they want to send it for a studying of uh, active galactic nuclei and the star formation. They found MKs are not good candidate that time, but right now they changed their decision and they say that MKs is much more even better than a test because test NEP is around 10 minus 19, but MKs you also uh, recently get uh, minus 20 and uh, higher uh, energy resolution as well. So you see that MKs uh, compared to other uh, uh, instrument, uh, to other detectors have uh, excellent sensitivity. Uh, SNR is really nice and excellent. Uh, time resolution is microsecond. Uh, I can say that minimum was around one microsecond. And energy resolution is more or less uh, like a test, uh, but the array size for tests, you have a limitation because everything in test should be inside of refrigerator. But for MPs, you don't have this limitation. You are using warm electronics. That's why the array size, even you can increase it to 10,000, 20,000, and also causes much more uh, cheaper than uh, tests. You see this jump. Uh, they are different astronomy projects. Uh, the red one shows TESS and the blue one shows uh, semiconductor bolometers. The green one that is a jump in around 2012 shows the MKs that's even uh, getting frontier compared to TESS. Uh, so this is uh, one, I, I can say that it's a future definitely uh, technology for uh, detectors, for uh, cameras. 
you see a bunch of uh, uh, projects that they used uh, MKEs. They are a millimeter range uh, for uh, for studying cosmic microwave background, and uh, these are uh, for optical range that uh, Ben Mazin uh, are working on uh, um, uh, exoplanet research. And also, we have also another uh, project that uh, Calder using uh, I mean that uh, using MKEs for X-ray detection. So the application of MKEs is not just limited to the, the astronomy. We have also uh, we can also find other applications in X-ray detection, dark matter detection. Here you see the one of the first uh, the projects using MKEs for X-ray. Uh, they used uh, tholium 500 nanometer tholium for uh, as an absorber of the X-ray. And also they use uh, silicon nitride as a thermal conductivity. And this is uh, here is a inductive part of the MKIDs, liquids that they design. So by this way for iron 55, they could get 75 electron volt uh, for 5.9 kilo electron volt resolution. That is uh, really the promising. Uh, the another uh, application is still the, no one is using, but uh, there are many proposals for using MKIDs instead of uh, other bolometers is uh, uh, using MKIDs for dark matter detection. Uh, the first time I think that it was 2003 in Caltech, they proposed uh, using MKIDs. But that time, as I mentioned, the MKIDs hadn't a uh, good uh, response in terms of quality factor, a noise equivalent power, or also resolution, energy resolution. Uh, but uh, by growing up and also growing technology and improving MKIDs, Again, it came up that uh, in 20, I think that the, the 20 recently, I've heard that they are also trying to uh, use also MKIDs for uh, the dark matter detection. Uh, so how it works that the dark matter, for example, uh, consider that interacts with your substrate, the phonons uh, will come to the absorbers here that we have tholium absorbers. Uh, this is very important that the width of absorber should be in order of uh, mean free pass of these uh, quasi particles. And uh, these quasi particles will uh, drop down to the M kits, and then you will have uh, you will have uh, extra quasi particles that change your uh, resonance frequency. Uh, for example, just uh, one of the research that uh, Goldvala did, uh, they got a 58 electron volt resolution for 20 kilo electron volt event. Another application that is really getting serious and uh, is running already in qubit for neutrino stable beta decay is that they are using crystal of uh, dioxide tellurium for uh, measuring uh, uh, double beta decay. Uh, but for uh, rejection of uh, alpha and uh, electron, uh, they require uh, because they are these are. However, tellurium oxide is not a, a scintillator. It's just uh, uh, using based on the sharing of light of the electron. But anyway, they need uh, next to their bolometers one uh, uh, photon detector. So for photon detectors, they were using before the other type of detectors. But recently, they are uh, they are going to use M kits. The first M kits that they uh, designed was aluminum M kits like this. And you see that, uh, that the resolution they got was uh, around 82 electron volt for 5.9 kilo electron volt. Uh, and uh, just 2020, uh, they got a 25 electron volt for, uh, for, for 5.9 kilo electron volt by uh, using the proximity techniques that uh, I mentioned before. I would like also to appreciate time to thank our collaborators and leaders and colleagues uh, that they really helped us to get uh, good results uh, in MKIDs. And thank you very much for bearing with me by this time. Uh, feel free to unmute to clap here. Uh, so thanks for a very nice talk. Um, we have time for questions. So um, you can go ahead and jump in or raise your hand or ask a question in the chat. Uh, Laura has a question. Hi, really nice talk. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about the uh, the stability of MKIDs. Uh, this was something we used, I'm part of the BLAST team, so we used MKIDs, um, but we did have uh, some issues that there went over F noise, the frequency at which uh, the uh, low frequency noise uh, 
becomes really dominant was quite high for them. And I was wondering if you can explain um, uh, that those were tinitride detectors. And I, ha I understand it has something to do with the material, but I don't quite understand why. Uh, the reason that usually we have low frequency, one over F frequencies, uh, uh, these are usual, you should uh, get, it, get rid of them. First of all, it definitely comes from the material itself and the fabrication. And also you should get rid of them uh, by just a good readout system. So this is one of the dominant uh, the, the noises that always you have in your frequency. But since you are working on lower frequencies, a little bit different, so the, the, a little bit the, your readout system will be tricky. But because we were using high frequency, like a four gigahertz, eight gigahertz band, so the, it was not that much difficult for us to get rid of that by filtering. But yes, for example, for uh, noise, as I mentioned, also uh, for example, even a two-level system noise we have. Uh, in lower frequency when we are measuring uh, the phase uh, of the changing of the phase of the M kids. Yeah, I think that uh, in general, you should just uh, get rid of that. Uh, definitely it exists, but you should try to improve it by just a good uh, electronic dial system. Okay, thanks. I'm muted. Are there any more questions? So uh, I, I had a, a quick question. When you're, when these are used in an optical telescope, are they used sort of in the same way that a CCD would normally use, where you have a, some focusing mirrors and you have effectively the same kind of plane, but you're replacing that's, that's that with right. your... Okay. Yeah, you have everything that you have, like a CCD camera, or EMCCD, just the point is that uh, CCD camera is working at the room temperature, but there you should have uh, a specific design of cryogenic, uh, cryostat, because first of all, you should have window. So, and second, also the, you should cool it down to the, the around 100 milli K. So the, exactly the same structure at the front of CCD, whatever you have for telescopes and mm -hmm. uh, transmitting the light just instead of a CCD, a little bit is more expensive, definitely, because the crisis are very expensive. So the crisis uh, price starts from $100,000 to $1 million, uh, half a million. And do you, do you have issues with vibrations there? Yeah, vibration also, the, we the, got rid of, because the company that produced for us the, uh, the, the cryostat, uh, they designed in a way that uh, it damped the, the vibra vibration we had in our course set. Enough but for optical astronomy. But uh, definitely you should uh, consider that. Uh, I think that it should be lower than several, several hertz. Uh, Ryan, you had a question? Yeah, I was going to ask um, to maybe contrast the MKIDs with TESs. So if we're trying to search for dark matter, um, so something like super CDMS, they use um, germanium or silicon crystals, and then they instrument the surface with TES to try and uh, detect the phonons. So it sounds like we could do something similar, but instrument the surface with uh, MKIDs. Um, are there advantages and disadvantages compared to TESs? Yeah, the resolution of MKIDs, uh, I can say that more or less same as TES. Maybe a slightly also less, but they are improving MKIDs. But the advantages comes from the simplicity of the fabricating of MKIDs and also readout system. Because in tests you should uh, have, uh, cry I mean that uh, you should also put your electronics in uh, inside of refrigerator. But uh, for uh, for MKIDs you have everything outside. The other advantages that MKIDs have, as I mentioned, is a frequency domain uh, multiplexing, do, uh, do, domain multiplexing, that you can increase the number of uh, pixels that you have easily compared to tests. So in tests, you have limitations. For example, if you say to me that you have a thousand pixel many MKIDs and I wanna make it 10,000, I say that, okay, uh, I can, uh, for example, electronics is not expensive, just 10,000 bucks. With, uh, I don't know, 50,000 bucks, I prepare your electronics and uh, you have 10,000 uh, pixel MKIDs there. But in test is not the same, so you should spend a lot of money there. Because the MKIDs are read out by a single readout line, is that right? It's a single readout line, but with one electronics, you are reading all pixels, 2,000 yeah. pixels with, some, uh, with just one single line. 
So there's a, an advantage in like a dark matter yeah. search because you don't have to have as many tables and yeah, lower that's, background. That's, that's right. In terms of also cry site, you're, uh, you don't have that much load, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Load. Thanks, man. I mean, that uh, I've heard recently from some colleagues at NIST that uh, they are working on that uh, much. I mean, that is, um, how to say, it's more seriously about uh, using MKs for dark matter, but because I'm not familiar that much about dark matter projects, so I'm not sure that how, uh, I hope that that future we can, uh, we have some collaborations uh, using MKs for dark yeah, matter. That was good potential. Thank you. I'll use my host prerogative again. Um, are, has any, do you know if anyone has looked at using these for Axion searches? So the, the traditional way those are run is you have a microwave cavity and you're looking for resonant conver conversion of axions into yeah. photons. And you've showed yeah. us some resonances. So I'm wondering if there's a- Yeah, to be honest, I- direction. Yeah, I didn't find anyone to work on that or at least I, they didn't publish any papers. Uh, but I know that uh, because INFN before was working on um, uh, microwave uh, kinetic inductance. So I think that because of their powerful team that they have there in CNR, CNR that's why they came up using MKITS. I think that uh, there were some internal uh, collaboration. That's why they are going to use MKITS for, uh, uh, for their bolometers. But definitely also the, they got that uh, this uh, using MKITS is much more better than the other. Uh, commercial, I mean, that uh, you know, previous type of predictors that they are using. Uh, any more questions? Laura, your hand is still raised. Oh, sorry, I'll, I'll lower it. That's okay. I was wondering if you had another question. Um, if not, I don't see anything. So I suggest we thank our speaker again. Thank you. This portion is always very awkward. Uh, <laughs> Uh, thanks again for a nice talk. Um, I think we can end the recording here.